trade. We just don't have the time to cover everything that, that we want to cover today with you guys. So we want you to know that um, Sabrina is an advocate for it. We have Sabrina. Sabrina's going to introduce our third guest that's in the studio because now we're going to shift gears and start to talk about once you expose these things or once you've been through these things, because we still have some, some grown 30-some-year-old uh, women that are still dealing with some Absolutely. some five-year-old little girl mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Somebody mm -hmm. touched them, invaded mm -hmm. them for years, mm -hmm. and you still have this down inside of you. And one of the things I told you, because I'm so transparent and I'm so open about mine, I, I honestly don't care who knows it. So when it, it happened to me at the age of 12, and I was... I, I, you know, I went on about life, you know, um, with my stepfather, so he had to be restricted. He has a 20-year restraining order. I go off and I become this detention officer at the age of 19, 20, and he gets locked, locked up. Mm -hmm. So he has to be, I have to see him. Okay, you're thinking, okay, I forgave him or whatever, but the fear that I had of this person to face this person, I finally got it out. In a, in a conversation with him, he finally admitted it, and I honestly forgave him. Okay, but forgiving him did not release me like I thought it was gonna release me because in a I go I grow up and I'm married now, and I'm still fighting these issues of what happened to me as a 12 year old, which is a big problem in a marriage. You know That's what I'm right. saying? You That's married to a grown right. man now. So it's right. You know, and so you still I'm still I'm still this little girl, you know, don't you know, you certain certain times you can't touch me. You know, certain places I, I don't want you to touch me. No, I'm just being yeah, real. It, it happens, you know. That's so true. you, I, I'm not wearing this. I'm not doing that because this is what was said that I I was wearing that caused me to be <laughs> touched like this. And this is, I, so I can't look like this. I don't want to look like a woman. I don't want to look feminine because I don't want you to touch me. But I married this Absolutely. man. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So you're still fighting this, which. Wow. The release didn't come until I sat in front of a therapist. Absolutely. And we were talking Absolutely. about therapy and how our culture, you say, go talk to somebody, they say, I ain't crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's why our third guest comes in. And Sabrina, let us know who we have in the studio with us. Yes, we have Miss Nadine Ali. This is my, you know, my other champion. I have two people with me that we're, I always say, we're like gum. Cause we're always like stuck together. Which is my cousin Desmond Jones and Miss Nadine Ali. Whenever you hey, see Desmond. me, you're going to see all of us <laughs> together. Mm -hmm. um, and so, it was so ironic, you know, and as I'm listening to the Holy Spirit, and he says a three-chord strain is not easily broken. Mm -hmm. So you have with you, you surround yourself with what you need to prepare you for when you go out. Mm -hmm. So you have your prayer warriors, you have your protectors, and those that encourage you. I encourage everyone to surround yourself with people that encourage you to be a better you. Mm -hmm. If you have to be surrounded by someone that always has to put you down or curse you out mm -hmm. or call you out of your mm -hmm. name. Not the business. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so Miss Ali is one of my, um, she's one of my biggest champions, and she is the medical component. So we partnered up. Okay. Um, and Miss Ali, we're gonna let them tell, tell, tell us about, about Miss Ali. Thank you all for introducing me, uh, and I really appreciate all of what both of you all said, shared your story of what has gone on with yourself. Actually, I was born and raised here out of Atlanta, Georgia Peach, <laughs> and um, of course, my biggest motto is always, you know, being healthy. I grew up without knowing my dad and happily not living with my mom. I've never had that happen to me, but I've always felt like, uh, and also went to school to work with children, um, and I've always felt like you have to feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, listening to your story, um, you know, got tears to come up in my eyes mm -hmm. simply because both of you all, but just imagine how the layers, like you said, you have to peel back. You have to peel off and, and even though it, it, it has never happened to me, but I've always mentally uh, been able to like be up on what's going on. I know my children when I was raising them, because I had to raise them by themselves, the dads wasn't around, I have two. And I've always been conscious, and that's one thing you have to, you know, be is conscious mm -hmm. of your surroundings. And when you mention that happened to you, I don't know if you mentioned it to your mom or whatever, but 
that happened a lot. Mm -hmm. Moms don't believe the children because they, uh, like you say, all caught up in that relationship and wanting to have a relationship. And it's so important for a child to go out through life feeling like they're on top of the world because they are. Mm -hmm. And when you've had that taken away from you, you tend to be reserved and so forth. No way have gone uh, to school for psychology. I've always been interested in it. My actual nonprofit is uh, South Carolina Neighborhood Advocate, mm -hmm. and it is a health and wellness uh, through physical, mental, and spiritual um, way of living, period. Mm -hmm. um, I do refer all the cases to those who have gone to school. Okay, you know? okay. So, um, working with Sabrina, we've ran into adults, again, who have come out. You'd be amazed. We had a candid conversation and people in the audience, and it was like, that happened to me. You don't realize when you speak it out, um, it releases. Can. Yep. It makes you feel free mm -hmm. because you're no longer reserving, you know, what has happened to you. And you can go on and continue to live your happy life like you're supposed mm -hmm. to. Um, I love this work. Uh, it was no accident <laughs> when I was um, co-host at People TV. And, of course, I had Sabrina on the show. And it was uh, sex trafficking um, yeah, human sick, yeah, human trafficking uh, show, and we just bonded ever since. So, big advocate of children, adults living their life like it's supposed to. Of course, we're gonna always run out, you, you know, into things in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But one thing, whether they're close to you or not close to you, people always try and get your happiness away mm -hmm. from you. Mm -hmm. You cannot let them rob that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, empower. And I've always been about, hey, you empower yourself. First of all, mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Acknowledge him at all mm -hmm. times, no matter what. Exactly. Because he's the one who give you the strength, mm -hmm. give you the will, give you the zeal to do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And that's my first and foremost. Big advocate about, look, you know, when my children was growing up, I had to raise them by myself. Very particular about guys. I didn't even have them to be meeting. You and know, that's the thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you you, can, you can be so overly protective. Mm -hmm. it, it causes you to either be too it's overly exactly protective, protective exactly. and then uh, you know, like I, I, I've had issues with it. My friends would joke on me. My baby, now she ain't spending the night at exactly. nobody's house. Same. She ain't that's going right. to the auntie's yes. cousins. Exactly. Nobody. Exactly. I, I, am I going to? Because she ain't staying over well, there. You know? and, and my boys, too. I don't even think exactly. it's just a little girl no, thing. No, it, I it think is it's, not. Let me tell you. touching boys like they touching girls. Absolutely. All y'all still Let me tell you. Absolutely. Even, <laughs> if, absolutely. <laughs> even if it, that didn't happen to you, uh -huh. being a mom is it's innately in you to be there. To just be with your Absolutely. children mm -hmm. simply because they are not adults yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, and you are supposed to protect them, and it is Absolutely. okay. People, like you say, think, oh, whatever. No. Mm -hmm. And mine. see, what you mm -hmm. don't realize, not you per se, but what uh, people don't realize is that help them <coughs> to know how to. Absolutely. When they become that. Exactly. Okay. Absolutely. Exactly. Was, One of the things mm -hmm. that was pointed out um, when I did when I started my therapy, I remember my therapist. She she she's so my my therapist is amazing. You have um, to share. I will share. Yeah. Um, she she put me on this book called Boundaries. That's number one. So mm -hmm. I had to get this book called Boundaries. And and I remember telling her, she well she told me we were talking about my children and about how they argue about things and. You know, your, your little girl, your, they siblings, and it, don't, don't come in my room. Mm -hmm. and I, she said, what do you tell her or him when they tell the other one not to come in their room? Mm -hmm. And I said, I tell them, this ain't their house. I pay the bills. There ain't no door closed. It's everybody's room. <laughs> and she said, wrong. She said, because what you're teaching them is that they can tell somebody to not come in their room, and they can still come. 
if, what if you're, when they go off to college, your daughter's in a dorm. That's everybody's dorm. Mm -hmm. But she should be able to say, don't come in my room, and state why don't come in my room, and the boy should abide by it. Same mm -hmm. she should abide by theirs. I should not t make her feel like anybody can come in. She said, because mm -hmm. then you're training them to think that no doesn't really mean no. no. Like, let let them have their no's. Let mm -hmm. them, and state why they have their no's. And, that mm -hmm. she, he, and I, I didn't, I never looked at it like that mm -hmm. until she right. told me that, but it's true. She's like, when your, when your children go off to college and they're in a dorm room and your daughter says, don't come in my dorm room. And then her roommate says, well, this is both of our room and gets to bring this boy in the room. How would you feel about that? She should be able to state Mm -hmm. What she doesn't want, and the boy should as well. So, like we were saying, you know, therapy has this thing, and, and we are on 108 Praise Radio, so we got a lot of Christians listening to us. And one thing, I, I, I'm that controversial Christian. I believe in prayer. Mm -hmm. I love God with all my heart. But some things he put in other people that you're supposed to go sit down and talk to. That's Simple really as that. Absolutely. You can't just keep on talking about I'm praying, about I'm working. You're going to kill mm -hmm. yourself. You know, prayer without works, faith without works is completely dead, mm -hmm. does True. nothing. It you does can pray all day long, right. but if you ain't moving your it feet, and you ain't taking no action, and God created these people to get these little degrees and help you work your way out of this mess, Absolutely. you are digging a hole for yourself and killing Absolutely. yourself. That's just how I feel about it. And you can take it how you want to take it. But you want mm -hmm. to pray and work at the same Absolutely. time. So don't a lot of times these things happen in our communities and they happen to our children and then you have these, you know, you're too sanctified to get it fixed. You want to you want to pray it out, right? You want to take you know, action. Take, you got no, to take, take action. It's called nine one one. And take your action, like and, you and say, and speaking, it's speaking. Yeah, exactly. You know, you right. just can't ain't nobody about to tear and pray and fast mm -hmm. about somebody doing something. Absolutely. We ain't doing and, that. And, and it's in the church. Yes, it is. In the, it is in the church, you have pastors that are molesting children. You have pastors that are beating their wives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it is mm -hmm. in the church. So um, to say, well, you know, I'm just going to deal with it because I'm the pastor's wife. The pastor's wife should be the big advocate. Um, right. As far as women being able to speak out, um, being able to help and talk to them or with their children. It does not, let me tell you something, molestation does not discriminate. Exactly. exactly. When it a, literally a pedophile of course have their they have their own um, preference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it happens to the rich as well as the poor. We got a question mm -hmm. coming in. Um and I I love my guys out at Amazing <laughs> Cuts Barbershop in Edwards, Georgia. Shout out to you guys. I know you're listening cuz Jimmy's the owner is telling me that you guys are listening. Um and we have a question coming out from someone at the shop. Someone is, has asked, at what age should you have the talk with them, with your children? What age? Um, I'm going to say, like I always say, children are extremely intelligent. You have two-year-old escape artists. For me, as soon as they learn how to talk, dada, mama, mm -hmm. as soon as they are able to put sentences together, mm -hmm. start having that conversation. Talk to them about their little bodies. You mm -hmm. tell them about their ears. You tell them about their nose. You tell them about their mouth. They're able to repeat it, and they know this. Mm -hmm. exactly. So at that time, um, you start telling them, this is your private space. Mm -hmm. No one is to put their body parts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. This is your private space. Mm -hmm. No one is to invade your personal place. No one has a right to make you feel uncomfortable. By the time they're five years, five years of age, where they're able to have... A, a actual conversation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that should be in, initiated, and so that was the purpose of the book. Because we start reading to our children at young ages, mm -hmm. and and the purpose behind it because it's actual poem. It, mm. The book is the book, book is a poem, so that they can remember. It, it rhymes. rhymes on purpose. Yeah, right. So if you can't remember <clears throat> anything else, you can remember. No one has the right. I even went as far as to tell my children, and I mean it, I can't even come up and through your private space. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. You I don't have to change your that. diapers no more. Yeah, that's <laughs> I right. ain't got don't no bitch. I ain't it, got right. no, I don't even want to know what you got going on. You, and you, and teach teach them them them. you know, you know that. I teach yeah. them me. Absolutely. I, I knock on the door before absolutely. I enter the bathroom. You're taking a shower. Me. And I had you. 
but I ain't even supposed to Absolutely. do it. So that means your daddy ain't even supposed to do it. And one thing I love about my ex husband, we so country. We all been in Georgia. You don't sit on no man's lap. Right. 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 Right.